all living things require nutrients to grow and reproduce. Nitrogen and phosphorus are the two most important nutrients that occur naturally in lakes and streams. They support the growth of algae and aquatic plants, which in turn provide food and habitat for the fish and other organisms that live in healthy water bodies. But when nutrients become too highly concentrated in the environment, the water can become polluted. In fact, the leading cause of water quality problems in Cayuga County is the overgrowth of algae and aquatic plants stimulated by unnaturally high concentrations of phosphorus. Much of the excess phosphorus we find in our lakes and streams has been transported there from various sources by surface water runoff. Runoff contains phosphorus that is attached to sediment particles as well as phosphorus that exists in dissolved forms. The most effective nutrient reduction programs, therefore, are those that address runoff that might contain phosphorus. Natural resource managers are well aware of the many sediment and nutrient reduction techniques that are available to choose from. But it is not always immediately obvious which one or combination of them is most appropriate in a given situation. That is why the Cayuga County Water Quality Management Agency has developed a methodology for use in evaluating alternative techniques and selecting those that have the potential to be the most effective in particular settings and situations. The methodology is designed to be applicable at a variety of scales, from an individual house lot, building site, or farm field, all the way up to a large watershed or region. In order to confidently determine which practices might be most appropriate in a particular circumstance, we need some set of standards by which to judge the potential effectiveness of the practices relative to one another. The points of comparison that will work best for you are likely to vary, depending on the specific requirements of your project and the programs you administer. But to help you get started, the Water Quality Management Agency suggests using this list of 12 evaluation criteria. The agency created this list by modifying and expanding a set of criteria previously developed by Cornell University's Pro Dairy Program. The criteria address a wide range of considerations, including, for example, the sustainability of successful implementation, the availability of financial and other required resources, and the measurability of impact on nutrient loading. A document containing descriptions of all 12 criteria may be found by following the links on the Water Quality Management Agency's website at cayugacounty.us slash WQMA. Resource managers work to address sediment and nutrient loading issues in many different types of landscapes, and any number of management practices may be useful in each of them. The manager's first step in determining which management practices to implement and where to implement them is to compile a preliminary list of practices that deserve further consideration. This list is based on the manager's experience and specialized knowledge of practices and their potential applicability in specific areas. Here we have chosen five practices from a list of options that was itself derived from a much more extensive catalog of possible practices. For those who may require assistance in identifying possible management practices, a document containing a list prepared by the Water Quality Management Agency may be found by following the links on the Water Quality Management Agency's website at cayugacounty.us slash WQMA. Sometimes, a quick scan of the criteria is all it takes to realize that a practice should not be given any further consideration. But when more in-depth analysis is warranted, each of the management practices in the preliminary list must be reviewed separately being careful to consider the landscape types in which they may be undertaken. This is done with the help of the matrix shown here. 
the name of the practice being reviewed is entered by the user at the upper left corner. The numbers in the first column on the left side of the matrix refer to the 12 evaluation criteria. General categories of landscape types are labeled along the top of the matrix. Specific landscape types where the practice may be applied are identified by the user and their names are entered by the user in the second row. Under each landscape type in which the practice may be implemented, check marks are placed in the spaces corresponding to the criteria that would likely be met. Where a criterion cannot reasonably be expected to be met, the space is left blank. In this example, we indicate which criteria would be met if rain gardens were created in medium density developed areas. Here, porous pavement in medium density developed areas is reviewed. And in this matrix, we have determined which criteria would be met if we were to take advantage of roof runoff structures on agricultural farmsteads. To see how these combinations of management practice and landscape type compare to one another, we move to this second matrix. But the evaluation criteria are not all of equal importance, so it isn't just a matter of counting up the check marks from the first matrix. Each of the criterion has a numerical weight assigned to it by the Water Quality Management Agency. The weights were calculated by analyzing and combining comparisons and rankings made by separate members of a panel of resource managers and planners. When we substitute the numerical weights for the check marks, we can now add the numbers in each column to calculate total scores and use these scores to predict which practices in which landscape types have the potential to be the most effective. The process is not necessarily ended once the scoring is done, however. Examination of the results can lead to new insights into how the criteria relate to the practices and how assumptions that might have been made about the practices during the review affected the outcome. These insights can, in turn, lead to an improved re-evaluation of the same or modified list of practices. The methodology we've just described is still in the developmental stage. It has been tested to see what kinds of results it produces when applied to real projects, and so far the results have been promising. The Cayuga County Water Quality Management Agency encourages that it be used and, if necessary, modified by any group or individual faced with the task of proposing nutrient management practices in their community. Remember that the evaluation criteria and the scoring weights that we have presented here can be revised based on your own needs and the lessons you learn through experimentation. The agency would be very interested to hear about the experiences and suggestions of anyone who applies the methodology in their work so that we may improve the process of evaluating management practices and reduce nutrient loading of our lakes and streams most effectively.